Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to do a short tutorial on some of the math behind vents and geysers. We are going to be assisted by our handy dandy Windows calculator. Now, using the Windows calculator may not be the most convenient when you're playing, and that's where your old cell phone calculator may come in handy as well. You're going to come upon a geyser, and in this case, this one's a minor volcano. But as we can see, it is definitely not dormant. Hence the sound and the little shaky action. We don't want dupes to be breaking into that quite yet. So we would need to wait for this volcano to go dormant, so that way our duplicate can get in there and research it. But what do I mean by research it? As you can tell from this cool salt slush geyser, it's got this awesome like weather thing on it. That means a dupe with the research skill has came over and completed an analysis. And we're not talking about just any old research. We need field research. By giving your dupe the skill field research, they gain access to geographical analysis. And that's the skill it takes to perform an analysis on a geyser. Once the dupe completes that, we are then ready to figure out our calculations. Now in this example, it would be beneficial to know how much water does this cool salt slush geyser produce. That way we can figure out how much water we have to use in the colony. Before we get into the actual calculations, it's good to go over everything in the description box and know what it means. The first item says it's producing brine. Not only is it producing brine, but it's producing it at 10.3 kilograms per second at minus 10 degrees. Now, when it means 10.3 kilograms per second, it doesn't mean always, it only means when it's erupting. So right now, because this thing is erupting, you can see that it's emitting 10.3 kilograms per second of brine. Incidentally, that brine is gonna be coming out at minus 10 C. The eruption period is how long it actually erupts before it goes idle. Now this doesn't mean dormant. The next dormancy is in 17.6 cycles. And dormancy just means it's when the volcano, the geyser, the vent, is just gonna be sleeping. It's not gonna be doing anything, but while it's not dormant, it will erupt 215 seconds every 705 seconds. We're gonna fast forward it until it's done erupting. That way we can highlight the active period. Now that it's done erupting for that period, you can see that it's gonna be idle. It's gonna erupt again in 0.8 cycles. That's the 215 seconds out of every 705. It's waiting the 490 seconds that's just the difference between 705 and 215, and then we'll erupt again. And 490 seconds is 0.8 cycles. And it will do this process for 64.4 cycles and then go dormant again. It'll stay in dormancy until it hits 112.8 cycles. That's what the active period is. This geyser will be active and in a state of erupting and going idle during its active period. And for some reason, cool salt slush geysers are great to look at because this one has plus 10 to decor. Now that we have the definitions down, let's turn back to our calculator. The end state is being able to accurately predict how much water this produces, whether it's active, erupting, or otherwise. For that, we need to figure out the percentage of time that it is both erupting and that it is active. And for this math, we're just gonna use division. So we take 215 seconds and divide it by the 705 seconds, because we know that out of every 705 seconds, it's going to be erupting for 215. We get an answer of 0 0.3049, or an easier way to say this is 30.49%. The great thing about using Windows calculators, they'll keep your calculation up here in history, because now we need to figure out how often it is active. We do the same calculation here. We take 64.4 and we divide it by 112.8. And for this, we get 0 0.5709 or 57.9%. So we now know that this geyser is active 57.09% of the time. And during that time, it is actually erupting 30.49% of the time. We now have the figures that can predict overall whether this geyser is active or dormant, what it will produce. And for that, we multiply these two numbers together. So to make it a little simpler, we are just gonna take 0 0.5709, we got this from our active period, and we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.3049. And we get another percentage here, 0 0.1740, or 
So no matter when this geyser is erupting or not, it's going to produce 17.4% of this figure here. This amount of brine. So our final calculation is rather easy. We take this 17.4%, 0 0.1740, and we multiply it by 10,300. Because we want to figure this out in grams per second. And remember, there's 1,000 grams in every kilo. And we get a total figure of 1,792.2. So we know the amount of brine that we can count on this geyser for is 1,792 grams per second. Now keep in mind that is predicting that you're storing all of the water during its dormant period. And this is important because when you're looking at devices such as the electrolyzer that provides oxygen, we know that the electrolyzer, by seeing its tool tip on the build menu, will consume 1,000 grams per second when it's running flat out. So that one geyser could run 1.7 electrolyzers. Now the other side of that coin and the rest of that story is electrolyzers don't normally run flat out. They run until they have max gas pressure and then they'll run some more. So just to make sure it's clear for everyone, we're going to go to another geyser. This geyser has already been analyzed. So we have all the information that we need because you'll notice, for instance, on this minor volcano, the active period isn't known until you do the analysis. So we'll start off by removing our previous calculations. This cool slush geyser erupts 241 seconds every 398 seconds. So we go 241 divided by 398 and we get 0 0.6055 or 60.55%. It's active 59.1 cycles out of every 110.7. And that gives us 53.38%. We multiply these two numbers together. And for simplicity, we cut it off at the fourth digit. 0 0.6055 times 0.5338 gives us an, a total production amount of 0.3232. Or 32.32%. So then we can just take this figure right here. Multiply it by the, the amount of polluted water the cool slush geyser produces. And that's 3,670.7 grams. And we're given a total final value of 1,186 grams per second. Combine that with our 1,700 grams from the other geyser. And we now know we have about 2.8 or 2.9 kilos per second of water from these two geysers. Some other statistics that you may find handy every once in a while is maybe you're wondering how much water this thing produces every eruption period. Well, for that, we ignore the active period and we just figure out the percentage of the eruption period, which is 215 divided by 705. That gives us 30.49% and we can multiply that directly by the 10,300 grams or 10.3 kilos. And we get 3,141 grams. What this means is during its eruption period, in other words, the 705 seconds, it'll produce 3,141 grams per second over this 705 second period. Now, if you want to know exactly how much it produces every eruption well we know when it erupts it erupts for 215 seconds so we can simply take the 215 seconds multiply it by the 10,300 so we know every time it erupts it produces 2,214,500 grams to make that a little bit easier on the math we can divide it by a thousand to put it into kilos so we know every time it erupts it'll give us 2,214.5 kilos of brine. Finally, I'd be remiss not to mention the Ani Assistant Geyser Calculator. It's a great tool that if you just want to plug in some numbers and get some results, this one can do it for you. Additionally, the site has some other calculators that can be handy, but I highly, highly recommend that you learn how to do it the manual way so that you truly understand how each of these figures are derived. 
I know this was a little bit of a shorter tutorial on the math behind geysers, but I hope you found it as valuable as I do in my everyday playthrough. I hope you learned something during this tutorial and had as much fun watching it as I did creating it. Talk to you soon.